Okay, now that I got your attention, let me tell you something. You know what really grinds my gears? So you know what really grinds my gears? When we implement a feature that, in my opinion, is amazing, that is a great feature, and everyone tries to tell us that it's not right. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you how our battery voltage monitoring works and when you should land to know when your battery's dead. All right, so I pulled this handy dandy graph on the internet. I'm gonna use this to uh, illustrate how batteries, uh, LiPo batteries work in general and also tell you how this applies to battery monitoring and also you know, when you should land according to the battery. So if you look at this battery graph, you can see it starts at 4.2, which we assume has been discharged, no, no power. We're gonna start at 4.2, and then it goes all the way down to 100, which means 100% of the battery has been discharged. The first thing you wanna keep in mind is you never wanna discharge your batteries to 100%. That's when you get the battery and you, you, know, you can't get it back, you can't charge it, there's nothing you can do to get it to come to life. That's when it hit 100%, there's no energy in it and, and that can easily ruin a battery. It can even cause it to catch fire and some weird things. So you want to land, um, you know, usually between zero and 20%. You want a little bit of battery life in there so you know that uh, the battery's gonna still have enough energy to come back to life. Um, the, when you're flying around till it falls out of the air, you're robbing it of this battery life. Now something that's interesting about this is you can see the higher you're discharging the batteries, the less energy you're gonna pull from the batteries. Um, when they're pulling 2C from these batteries, they're not even, they're barely going over 90%, which is probably saving your battery if you're doing a full throttle circle and it falls out of the air. But if you're discharging it really slowly, that's when it tends to actually kill the battery rather than uh, save it from dying. Um, so the way our battery monitoring works is we're actually filtering our voltage. Uh, everyone else, uh, like Betaflight, they have no filtering. And when you use a sensor, it always needs to be filtered. Our gyro is a good example of this. If we just use the raw gyro readings, your quad would fly out of control because the reading it gets is not accurate. You need multiple readings grouped together in a filter to actually get a decent, accurate reading. So you need some sort of filter on it to get a good, steady um, data. Now, as in terms of gyros, you know, you use low pass filters and that helps get the data. And what that basically does is it averages the samples over time, taking into account the most current one and weighting the current one higher, depending on where your cutoff frequency is. Um, on battery voltage, you know, we did something unique. We created our own algorithm, our own filter, specifically aimed at quads flying quadcopters. One thing that's amazing about our battery voltage is if you go there flying, it only comes down. You won't see it bounce up and down because a battery, it just doesn't lose and gain energy. If a sensor's having a hard time reading the voltage, it's gonna show as a very low reading. What's happening there is your motors or your ESCs are using all the energy and there's not enough energy left over to get an accurate reading. That's a reading we don't wanna trust and that's a reading we don't wanna use. So our filters take this into account. When our batteries show that it's at 3.6 point volts per cell, in flight one, it's at 3.6 volts per cell in flight one. In beta flight, it could show down to 3.2 volts per cell. It could go back up to 4.0 volts. It's all over the place. And I know you guys are used to seeing it that way, but it's not the way it should be. One filter that is amazing at filtering battery voltage is the extended Kalman filter. I know you guys have heard about the Kalman filter and, and people thought for a little while, maybe they're using them in their quads, but it has other uses that are actually better than just filtering rate mode because it doesn't do a very good job of this. And battery voltage is one of those things where um, people actually use it to filter their readings to have an accurate reading. Now, in terms of our thing, we didn't use the Kalman, we used our own algorithm. Our algorithm is a little better, it's a little more aimed at our quadcopters. It works in a similar way, but uh, it does something a lot different. The way it works is we actually have multiple saturation filters cascaded with a few other things that actually only let the voltage go down. If the voltage is reading higher after we've run it through a low pass, we can count on that being an accurate reading. But when it's reading lower, we put a little less credibility on those readings till we've seen it stay lower in some sort of trend. And that allows us to get a very accurate voltage reading. 
in terms of when to land, the actual voltage is a better indicator than even milliamps used because you have no idea how good your battery is, what the capacity is. You have usually no idea what size battery is. We all switch batteries back and forth. Um, and not only that, but you don't know how well charged it is, if it's been sitting there, but voltage is always accurate. Voltage will always show when the cells are getting to the point where they're going to die. Now looking at this graph here, you can see you get very limited power once you get past 3.5 volts per cell. So keeping that in mind, 3.5, 3.6 per cell, you have less than 80% of your power left. So 3.6 volts per cell is where you want to start landing. When you see that in our OSD, that means come on in because you have less than 20% to get back in before the quad falls out of the air. And remember, the closer you get to zero, the more likely you are to damage your battery. You can see most of your power is all the way to 3.5, 3.6 volts per cell. So keep that in mind when you're flying. So to figure out what voltage you should land at, you can either put it on per cell voltage, which most of us do, since we don't have to do the math in our head, or you can multiply times the cell count. So if you have a four cell, you multiply times four, 3.5 times four, to figure out uh, what voltage you should land at. So that would be 14 volts. Uh, 3.6 is where I recommend going, that's the safest, and you can see there's really not that much power difference between 3.5 and 3.6 volts that it's worth risking your batteries from being damaged. So keep that in mind when you're flying. You want to land at 3.6 volts per cell. This may not apply if you're using the camera uh, voltage monitoring, it may not apply if you're using beta flight because I know those readings bounce all over the place. But the bottom line is our filter is made to be accurate at all times, to take into account the trends your quad's doing, where your throttle's at with your quad, how much you've drained it, if it's bounced up and down, and it takes that all into account to create an accurate voltage reading. So if you have any questions on voltage or you wanna discuss this, please like, share, comment in the comments section, and please smash that like button, please hit the bell so it notifies you of future videos, and let me know what other videos you want me to do in the future.